Hey, you guys, this is Amy Bernier with the Being Brave podcast. And I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in, that there's such an importance around us sharing our stories of being brave. So the motivation behind this podcast is for you to see so many different examples of people that have decided to be brave, to follow their heart, no matter what society was saying. And the more examples that we have, the more sharings that we have, the more I desire for you to see what is possible for you. So today my guest is Juliet Tang, and I will not introduce her because I'm going to let her do that for herself because her story is amazing. And let's just start from the beginning. Hi, Juliet. Who? Hi, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so good to be here. And I love the intro. Love, love, Absolutely. love the intro. Absolutely. I'm really curious. Um, I know some background on who you are and what you do. However, I also know what we have in common is that we both used to be teachers. Absolutely. Which is so fascinating, I believe. Um, do you mind telling us, give us a little intro into who you are and what you do now, and then we'll dive straight into, you know, you telling us about a time when you have really been brave. Oh my goodness, okay, so, so guys, I have never worked out my, my perfect elevator pitch. <laughs> totally okay. Because it's impossible, I feel it's impossible for me or for you or for anyone to put who we are and what we do into a sentence that we can speak of within four seconds or so. So I am Juliet. I am a coach and mentor for conscious, heart-centered, and purpose-driven men and women around the globe who work with psychedelics. And I support these men and women in integrating and embodying the wisdom from their psychedelic journeys and creating their highest visions in their lifestyles, their relationships, their purpose, expansion, spiritual growth, income and impact, basically whatever it is that they want to unlock within themselves, that is their highest calling. And uh, yay. <laughs> So I came from a teaching background, interestingly. I was, I was a school teacher for 10 whole years. I never ever imagined myself to be what I'm doing today. Not even in my wildest dreams. And um, I was, um, so a little background about this, um, about how I made the transition. I was terribly unhappy with who I was and what I was doing. I had a stable job, by the way. I had a, you know, a stable six-figure income. You know, I lived in a beautiful apartment in a great place in, you know, great neighborhood in New York City. I had my friends. I had my twice a year vacations to Mexico, Dominican Republic, whatever it is. And, you know, I, I had a life that People would say, you know, I should have been grateful of, and I was grateful. It's just that it wasn't what, it, I just kept on having this feeling that it wasn't something that I was born to be or to be living. I kept on searching year after year after year, and nothing came about. I couldn't find the answers. And later on, during my spiritual awakening, I realized that I was looking for answers outside of myself, <laughs> which is super common in this process. Totally. Well, yeah. I have a question. I have a question because I think you said something really, really important is, you know, according to all the, you know, the checklist, you know, the great place to live, check, the great salary, check, the vacations, check, the friends, check. Like you had, I think a lot of people are in that scenario, right? Where they have every, all the boxes checked and they have this, this feeling of, of not feeling fulfilled or there's something more. And just like you said, they feel guilty about it because, you know, you know, from the outside looking in, people are like, you know, gosh, I wish I had her life. Right. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit more about what it felt like. So you had all the things, right. All the things that people want, but what did it really feel like on a day-to-day -day basis that made you really go like, I can't do this anymore. Absolutely. So I felt empty. I felt like this drone that was just drifting through life. And um, that emptiness at first, I, I thought it was just maybe, you know, maybe it's me. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I wasn't grateful. But eventually that emptiness just started consuming me on the inside to the point that I felt like a walking shell. 
And I remember I was drifting from day to day, you know, week to week, telling myself, well, you know what, you just, you just gotta, you just gotta stick with it because this is what you chose. This is what your parents said to be, you know, a really nice place for you to be. This is what's acceptable. This is your chosen path. And also at the time, I was really stuck in that disempowered identity, believing that I couldn't be anything more, believing that I wasn't good enough to call in any other different results. And this was the best that I could create for myself. So I remember um, I tried everything. I tried therapy. I went to, you know, I went to different holistic healers. And um, eventually I decided to even change jobs. So I went from one job to the next, believing that was going to solve my problem. Mm -hmm. And then there was this one morning, I was in Times Square, getting on a train, and I was just looking at all of these people around me, holding on to their coffee. They looked like drones themselves. In the morning, half awake, they just didn't look like they wanted to be there. And in that moment, I had this feeling, and I was saying to myself, you know what, like, is this really the life that I chose to be living in this? You know, is this, is this something that I want to be having for the rest of my life. And, and I was even thinking like, oh my goodness, if this is how it's going to continue, why am I even here? So yeah. those really big questions started to, just their voices started getting stronger and stronger and stronger to the point that I decided to quit literally two months into that new job without a backup plan with a few thousands of dollars in the bank because I just had no idea what I was able to do with my life, but I knew it wasn't that. Mm -hmm. I think that that's one of the bravest things that anybody can really do. And it's right for some and it's not right for others. Like I will definitely put that out there because I've done the same thing that you've done. You know, it was two months before the end of the school year teaching. And I was like, why can't I just suck it up? and just keep going oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's one of those things where you, when you realize how unhappy when you really 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 realize how unhappy you are when you actually look at it that there was no other choice did you feel that way too like there oh, yeah. is no other choice like i like it wasn't like i can stay or i can go like staying wasn't an option for me yeah, for me, it was do or die. I mean, listen, I told myself to suck it up for 10 whole years. That is an entire decade of someone's life. And I kept on coming with every single excuse under the sun as to why I needed to stay there. Every single excuse. And later on, I realized all of those excuses were excuses. I made them up so that I, I could stay within what felt really familiar to me so that I didn't have to step outside of my comfort zone. But it was do or die. I said to myself, if I stay here, I'm going to die. Whatever that type of death was, some type of soul death, right? Yes, yes. That was how I was experiencing it. Yeah. Wow. I think calling it a soul death is so perfect because like I've tried to put it into words to others about what it felt like. And it's unlike anything I've ever experienced before, but it's like, there is no choice. Like the unknown, which oftentimes, you know, even now going into the unknown, which like, as Julian knows, there's more unknown that I'm going into after today. <laughs> Woohoo, more unknown. Yay! Oftentimes when we step into the unknown, that can feel like a death in and of itself because, you know, like the familiar, you know, the going to the job every day, you know, seeing the same people every day, drinking the same coffee, eating the same lunch, like seeing the same students, like having the same problems. Like we think like that's actually safety. That familiarity is safety and it's totally not. And once you get to that point where you're like, I mean, I believe it's a, it's a, it's a journey that we're supposed to go on right? I know you believe that as well. But at the time when it's happening, it literally does. You're, it's, it's like you're choosing one death for another death on many levels. You know? Absolutely. So a lot of people refer to this as the ego death because, um, you know, I, and this is, this is the process of spiritual awakening, which, is, which used to be something that I really focused on in my work. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for a lot of people to have this type of awakening, we kind of first experienced the rock bottom. Like for me, it wasn't just a rock bottom that I was experiencing. I made myself a 
comfortable little hole <laughs> at rock bottom just to make sure that I wouldn't get out of there. And I know so many people can resonate with that statement. Totally. We feel, we feel that we need to hold on to that little false sense of safety, whatever that means, this marriage that's failing, this job that's failing, you know, this, uh, this environment that's not serving us. But at the end of the day, like you mentioned, Amy, there is no such thing as true safety because at any moment you know tomorrow there's, there's no even guarantee that there is next breath so in that sense there is no safety there is only the false sense of safety which then turns into this mental cage that we imprison ourselves within so at the end of the day we are trading that type of death with another type of death, which is the death of the ego, the death of the old conditioning, and the death of that older identity that, that's no longer serving us so that we can make that leap of faith into the person that we want to become. Absolutely. So I'm curious about like, so the, the, the few days after you, you know, you quit your job, like, what was that like? I'm thinking about what it was like for me. I'm curious as to what it was like for you. <laughs> the, just this, oh my God. Just, let, let, let's talk about like just the first couple of days after you resigned. <laughs> so I would say the first three months, I, I have no idea what I went through. Some type of roller coaster that I was just going through this first wave of my spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was, I was either laughing like a crazy woman or I was cr like just crying like a crazy woman in the corner for hours and hours and hours at a time. Because what I felt was that there were so many emotions that were just coming up and I was processing all of them. And I was just like, Oh my goodness, I can't believe I actually believed in that before. All of those old beliefs started surfacing and it just felt like there wasn't enough time or space for me to process all of that. And the entire paradigm was crumbling. It felt like my entire world was crumbling because, you know, I, I identified with that, you know, with that role that, you know, the teacher for so long, right? I went to work every day, I had a schedule, I ate lunch with certain people, I would go home, you know, do the work that I needed to do and have the steady paycheck, the direct deposit that would go into my bank. All of a sudden that was gone and I felt like someone just kind of, you know, took my entire world, shook it, and then everything started falling apart. And I went through the entire process of falling apart, which at the time I didn't know that things were actually falling into place. So I would describe it as a huge uh, roller coaster ride of things falling apart one piece after another. I think it's so beautiful that you were able to really embrace all of those emotions. Um, I, like, I think that's, that's unbelievably wonderful because I found myself like looking like I ended up having emotions also being in denial about what I just did and also just feeling like lost and actually looking for the next thing like actually being like oh so I guess I'm supposed to be a CrossFit teacher and a kickboxing coach now like I really really what like wanted the replacement thing and I think that to honor yourself in the way that you're speaking of and allowing yourself. And I'm sure on some level you, you you felt like, well, I didn't have a, I felt like I chose all the emotions. <laughs> emotions all chose me, but just as for, from a different perspective, like I definitely was, had a harder time embracing all of that. Um, so I honor you in, in being able to do that and allow that all to come forth. Um, because there are, were, are other ways of not embracing it in such wholeheartedly, I guess. Thank you so much, Amy. Um, so I, uh, I call myself lucky that around that time, my first coach, my first spiritual coach, who was also my integration coach, came into my life. And I've been working with her ever since. We're talking about years. And she was able to hold the sacred space for me to go through all of that, to go through the entire crumbling and almost like a destructive process in which my entire old world just, you know, went into pieces. And um, she was able to guide me through this entire process and help me see the light of the tunnel. So I did, I, I didn't do it alone. 
um, I did have help at the time. It was the best help that I, I could have given to myself. Well, and you totally had the wisdom to be able to choose that, um, which I think is is unbelievable. I too had a co- I. I not like right away, but ended up having a coach too. And I swear that person was, was really more than anything, just telling, reminding me that I was choosing me, like mm-hmm. that I was choosing me above the story and that all the feelings that I had had of challenge and, you know, frustration and just, just feeling just so overwhelmed every day that it, like I, she helped me step away from blaming myself because there was still part of me that was like, why couldn't you do it? And it's interesting, right? Even yes. though my last yes. day, at least 10 to 15 women came up to me that I worked with and said, I wish that I could leave too. <gasps> you know, it was one of those things where, and, and somebody later on said, you know, you could very well be a systems, a system buster. He was like, and that's a person that comes in and decides to basically hold a mirror up to a system that is broken. He was like, so the ripple effect that you caused by choosing to resign when you did and how you did actually impacts more people than you think it does. And at that point I was like, wait, what? This is more than just me? And he's like, yes, he was making the acknowledgement that we're all connected and that when we make decisions that impacts others and even when it seems to be, you know, a world rocking, experience that it actually can be a benefit not only to the person making the decision but the people that are witnessing the process as well absolutely what a beautiful reminder thank you so much amy for bringing this up i mean this this just reminds me of one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite spiritual teachers marianne williamson yes um it goes that when you liberate yourself you're liberating all those around you which is absolutely the truth and just to hear that just to hear you saying it's okay to choose me that that just that, that just brought up so many memories because now that i'm remembering this yeah i too was feeling really guilty and i felt like i was doing something wrong and i feel that you know living in this society we are trained to not put our needs first we're trained to really look after everyone else and to make sure everyone else is okay and to continue to give rather than receive which actually you know in my work i see that blocking people's love from coming in i see it blocking the abundance from coming in it's because we haven't learned how to receive we haven't learned what it's like to take care of ourselves to love who we are and to go for our own desires almost you know immediately whenever i talk to people what are your desires their immediate reaction is, oh my goodness, um, I don't want to talk about them because that's selfish. That's yes. selfish. So what yes. we did, you know, on many levels, some people might see it as a selfish thing, but at the end of the day, it is us giving ourselves permission to be who we are and to go for what really calls us in this world. And I feel that's an important message for the whole world to hear right now. Absolutely. And um, I'm so glad that you brought up Marianne Williamson because upon your recommendation, I am reading A Return to Love. And I feel like, you know, and I'm doing a lot of journaling and a lot of work on, you know, when, when I realized when I, when I resigned from my job, like the ripple effect that happened in my life was the, and the pattern and the re- constant reminder that I'm receiving even now is you need to put yourself first, like the love for yourself, the how you treat yourself, because that people pleasing, overachieving um, persona that I had had been, you know, st- standing in for so long. It really, what I'm noticing is it it takes a while to, you know, to release the layer after layer after layer of. Um, conditioning that really you know says taking care of other people is the thing and interestingly enough i i just wrote in my journal you know earlier today um the prompt was something about like how how does it feel to to be in your divine purpose like how does your life feel and what does it look like and i found myself writing over and over and over again about how it it's me making myself happy and me fulfilling my desires and i had to i had to pause and appreciate myself for a minute because 
I'm like, oh my gosh, even a couple years ago, I was, st I, I don't think I would have been able to write that or had I written it, I wouldn't have been all in on what it really means. So yes, I think that part of the gift of this podcast is, you know, being brave to me is really choosing yourself above all else. And oh. how that looks, I might have to write that down. <laughs> Remember that. Remind it's choosing yourself above all else, even when, because oftentimes like choosing ourselves above all else looks like saying no to a lot of people that want us to say yes, or even a society that wants us to be different. And fundamentally, I would like to know, like, from your perspective, when you said yes to yourself above all else, and you chose to you know, leave your teaching job, and you chose to have a coach, and allow yourself to grieve that old you, what has unfolded since you have, you know, said yes to yourself above all else, Juliet? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I could be here for three days sharing <laughs> this and there still wouldn't be enough time for me to share what came about. So I got to say saying yes to saying yes to myself really meant for me to reclaim my power and my truth, my vision, my sovereignty, my wholeness in this world because I was, and I'm sure so many people can relate to this, I was living under the impression that I was I was broken, that I was disempowered and I wasn't whole. And, and this is why I kept on looking for things outside of myself, including approval. I was a huge people pleaser. So oh, yeah. I kept on looking for validation and approval outside of myself because that was something that I could not give to myself. So the biggest, one of the biggest pieces that came um, that came out of this journey was real was realizing that rather than creating something rather than looking to create something outside of me whether it be you know a soul community or abundance or success or fulfillment I needed to first reclaim my wholeness mm -hmm. and that wholeness means that I am whole complete and perfect just as you are Amy just as everyone on earth we are whole complete and perfect and there, there's nothing broken about us there's nothing that we need to fix there's nothing that's missing it's just about remembering that part and from the wholeness within we then get to activate the love that we want we then get to activate the the abundance that we want the purpose that we want the impact that we want to have in this world all of these desires actually come from activating unlocking and claiming that wholeness within so this is a journey that has allowed me to continuously peel off more layers in which I see myself as not as wholesome mm. as my essence or not as you know not as empowered as I would like to be and it's been a journey of me just reclaiming that power over and over and over and like you mentioned it's different layers and <laughs> just when you think that you know you're you're through <laughs> one layer and it goes, really, it goes in an interesting spiral fashion and I've been doing this work forever but every single time when I come back to the same place I can now look at the same the same piece with a completely different perspective and I get to appreciate what I was able to leave behind and I also get to appreciate what more I can leave I can let go of so that I can step into a higher almost like a different way of being even though it might look like I'm redoing the same layer over and over and over yeah. that's that's transformation you know that's just as consciousness there's no ending to our expansion, to our growth, and to our evolution. So it's all about continuously evolving and following our heart's calling, following that voice that says, this is who you are. This is what you came here to be, do, and create. And never allow yourself to accept anything that's less than that. And for me, that's been the biggest takeaway out of this entire journey. Mm. You know, it makes me think about like, you know, how much like television and marketing and Facebook and like all these things, like so many messages out there. And I mean, this is why I even, <laughs> I even at one point did taught marketing for a heart centered marketing with integrity because I couldn't 
understand the the messages that were being sended over and over and over again that were not enough. And I had this conversation with myself at one point. I even asked myself, like, because I was told marketing needed to be this press pain points and do this and that. And I knew in my heart, like, I couldn't do that because what I know about people is that we're, we're struggling with something. Like, you can have, like, like, Juliet's former life, you know, you can have all the boxes checked, you can have all of those things. And deep down inside, you know, you're still feeling like you're still feeling like something's missing. I really believe that, you know, there's so many people out there that feel that way. And my thinking was, my job is not to make people feel worse. My job is to make help people feel seen, heard and understood, so that when they're ready, they know that I can help them. And what if you know, what if those were the messages we started sending ourse ourselves and each other, like all of the time, you know, I very much try to go about my life in that way of, you know, being a space where people can be seen, heard and understood. And, you know, I mean, I wasn't even planning on talking about this, really, <laughs> we didn't have a plan, you guys, but like, what does, from your point of view and the steps that you took early on, what, what was, you know, acknowledging your wholeness, acknowledging your completeness and your perfection, what did that look like when you first started stepping into that? Like, so you resigned from your job, you have this coach, and now you have this new knowing of wholeness, but what did that actually look like on like a day-to-day -day basis? Like, what did that process, how did that unfold? Oh my goodness. Okay. So, so first of all, I would really love to acknowledge your voice because just by looking at your Facebook posts, I feel inspired. I feel uplifted and I'm so glad that there, there are more and more people who are awakening to the truth that, you know, we're here to build each other up. We're not here to add more struggle, you know, to other people's lives. And, and by doing so, we're here to remind people of that soul remembrance that everything that we desire is already within us. And we just need to activate that part, that, that highest part within us first. So for me, it, it looks like um, I, I'm someone who, who really loves receiving a lot of support from my team of coaches, mentors, and experts, because I believe this is the fastest way for me to transform. Mm -hmm. And I, I, every single day when I wake up, rather than feeling stressed and anxious and depressed, which was my default mode for, the past, for 10 years, I will wake up stressed, you know, feeling like I just didn't know what to do with myself. I will wake up feeling grateful, calm, lighthearted, and joyous feeling like, you know, I, I'm finally doing something that belongs to me. I'm finally doing something that's, that's my, that's what I really want to be doing in this world and not what other people want me to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, I go through these, I go through these moments every single day in which I am just sitting on the couch and I'm so grateful, just so grateful that I am looking, you know, at the sky or whatever and I just say to myself, oh my goodness, uh, is this real? Did I really create this for myself? Because, you know, going from that, that place of like feeling your, you've made home, you've made a home, you know, um, at rock bottom, just not yeah. knowing what the purpose is, to be in the fully embodied vision and version of you who is living your purpose. I mean, there's nothing but gratitude. Granted, it's not to say that I don't have my days or I don't have my moments in which things are not, you know, going extremely peachy because that's not the point of doing this work. But it's really the sense that I feel I am in charge of my destiny, that there is nothing and no one outside of me who has the power to make me feel any way, to make me do anything that I'm not called to do, or to affect my destiny in any way because I know that I am the master of my destiny. I am the captain of the ship. <laughs> and, and you know, it is how I take charge of my internal world, of my imagination, my thoughts, my words, my feelings, my emotions, and also my actions, which I call the five creation tools. How I take charge of my internal world, um, you know, kind of it determines what type of experiences I create 
in my external world. So it's a complete sense of empowerment. It's a complete sense of gratitude. And also just feeling that, you know, you alone are the person who, you know, who, who can affect your life in any way. Wow, that's just so, so, so powerful. And what I hear you saying is, you know, it's the choices that you make about what you're thinking about, what you're thinking about, what, how you choose to feel about things. And it's through those harnessing your internal world that really helps you to create your destiny, meaning the, the life that you see around you and how you're moving forward. Um, so psychedelics, I've, I've, I've done them one time. <laughs> I'm and the experience was challenging and you know about that. I don't know if I want to talk about that, but we'll talk about your experience. <laughs> how, did you, how did you go from, you know, how did you go from, um, you know, this rock bottom, making home in rock bottom. I, I feel like I'm going to quote you on that um, because I feel like it's such an accurate and well put description of um, this safe, secure world that we've created based upon what, what we think we're supposed to do. I had um, a mansion there, Amy. I had a mansion there. <laughs> I With a butler too. <laughs> there. I think I wasn't quite mansion status, but I was so... <laughs> <laughs> right there too and it's so interesting how the things that happen that um that that break our mansion that break our house at rock bottom and in my experience it was you know you know i had had chronic back pain a couple years prior to resigning from my teaching job because i didn't think the teaching job was the problem i like you said you know we feel wrong we feel like it's on us we try the therapy we try the drugs we try the you know the energy i i didn't even wasn't even an energy healing then um or knowing it really about it at that point. But like, I totally thought that I had reconstructed my life and I was super, super fit. I was super healthy. I was meditating. I was doing yoga. I was doing CrossFit. I was teaching kickboxing. I was doing all of these really healthy things, learn mindfulness, like all that stuff. I thought, oh, now I have all the tools in order to be a healthy human being. Then I go and I get put myself in, you know, it's another state and another grade and teaching again. And it took it took a couple of months, but I started to see what I started to see was because pain was a, a really, really strong teacher for me. Like what I started to see was patterns of sit of behavior of situations that I was in. So I had the chronic pain, which was like the huge red flag that something's wrong. Well, I had the back surgery and I did, you know, all the physical therapy and I got help, you know, I did all those things. I checked those boxes. And then I put myself back in there. And one of the, one of the really scariest, the scariest thing was that I was repeating a pattern of people of authority, not liking me and, you know, basically wanting to crush me. And oh. that's not the first, like, this is a pattern. Of course, I didn't know it until after, but this is a pattern I had been repeating over and over and over again. And when I saw it, like part of me was like, um, all right, universe, I see this pattern. I was like, do I need to quit my motherfucking job in order for this to pattern to stop? Because I, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at, you know? And really, when I made this decision to resign from my teaching job, I felt like I was sending a message to the universe, aka to myself, really, that, you know, being treated poorly and being like someone else's doormat and being in situations where that dynamic was normal or okay, was no longer okay in my life, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what it took. So it wasn't just pain. It wasn't just, you know, anxiety and depression. It literally was me identifying that this pattern was happening over and over in my life and that I was the one that had to get myself out of it because I was the only thing that this pattern had in common with each other. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I believe pain is everyone's teacher because I was, I was in a lot of pain as well, not physical, but mental and emotional. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that you mentioned about those boxes that, you know, you checked out the boxes called yoga, meditation, <laughs> going to energy sessions, taking antidepressants. By the way, teachers take a lot of antidepressants. Go <laughs> 
and wine. It's like wine and antidepressants <laughs> and, and getting married. They all get married really early. <laughs> no offense to all the teachers out there, but what I realized is, is because, you know, and what, what really made it clear for me was like some of those things I didn't do anymore. Like I realized in this second teaching experience in Maryland, I remember sitting in the lunchroom and having my younger, like by at least like maybe like a decade younger, you know, coworkers talking about them, they're, that they're anxious, that they're OCD, that like wine and work out and boyfriends and I can't wait till he proposed. It's just, I was like, oh my God, this was me not so long ago. Like with, with you know, with all of these things and, and I did help myself by, by doing, by living life in a healthier way, but it actually just put me in a place to be able to see the dysfunction mm-hmm. um, and be able, just be able to see it and be like, oh, wait, that's a former version of myself. Like this, it isn't, it isn't me. These people are wonderful. These people are, are perfect. These people are giving. And um, so in my experience, it took me actually getting healthier and then being put back in a situation for me to actually see that it was the system that was creating, you know, these problems. And the reason I could see it was because I could see an old version of myself and other people. And it was like this huge aha moment where it was like, have you ever had that feeling where you're like, mm-hmm. I know this thing that's true, this new truth, and everybody in the room doesn't know it, and you feel <laughs> like you're absolutely alone, and you're looking around, and you're like, I really trust, like, nope. I try to we try to like talk to people about how, like, this doesn't this feel bad? Like, doesn't this feel like it shouldn't be? And they just thought I was nuts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I actually call it the matrix. If you have to <laughs> the matrix, Neil, the matrix has you. So um, it's really, it's really collective unconscious programming. And there's so many, you know, there's so many different programs that are operating right now that people simply cannot see the truth. They cannot get in touch with that higher part of themselves mm-hmm. within that has the truth. So, you know, there's the lack program, which is, you know, oh, there's not enough, there's not enough love, there's not enough money, there's not enough wisdom, there's not enough kindness. There's also the victimhood program, like what you mentioned earlier. And I went through the same thing. I felt like, you know, my bosses at my, at my, you know, last job, they were picking on me. Like they just didn't like me and, um, you know, they were crushing me. So there's definitely the victimhood program. Mm -hmm. There's also the powerlessness program, which we feel that we have no power to change our lives. We have no power to make something happen. We have no power to take charge of our own destinies because it's whatever goes, right? So all of these unconscious programs are running and most people, until they have this type of awakening and they question the existing paradigm, they question the status quo, they don't realize that they're running on the same programs that have created all of these problems in their lives. So this type of awakening triggers the, um, you know, kind of like the destruction, I would say, of some kind of like failure inside of the matrix, right? Just like in the matrix movie, in which in the movies, in which, you know, all of a sudden you wake up and you realize that, hey, wait a second, um, I am not that older identity. I'm not that person that I thought I was. I am something that's actually so much bigger. I, I have the ability to observe those thoughts, but not identify with those thoughts. I have the ability to tap into um, the power to be able to choose those thoughts that are more empowering to me or that are more conducive to what it is that I want to accomplish in this life. Mm-hmm. And I have the power to choose the calling that I want to go for rather than just the job that's going to pay bills and put food on the table. I have the choice to create a different type of relationship with myself. I have the choice to, you know, um, create actually whatever it is that I, I really want in this life. So that type of awakening is so, so, so powerful. And I believe globally, this is something that that's just happening. There, there's a massive awakening going on and people, more and more people are waking up every single day because 
they are no longer satisfied with their existing paradigms and they're looking for answers. And usually people start to look for answers outside of themselves, like, mm -hmm. like how we did it. And totally. then when we realize that, you know what, <laughs> like you can try this for 10 years, you can go, you can be the best yogi in your yoga class and yep. you're still unhappy and you're still stuck in that same circumstance. Perhaps that answer is not outside of me. Perhaps it has to do with my thinking. So the moment that we go in, everything just changes. Everything changes. We start to realize that we are the awareness that gets to absorb all, all of this and choose what it is that we are observing. So that's, that's what we're going through collectively. And it's a super exciting time for all of us on Earth right now. I love it. <laughs> I message you or talk to you and I'm like, oh, and this thing happened and you're like, it's so exciting. And I'm like, you're right. Like I was seeing things as falling apart and I think you're absolutely right. It really is the excitement um, because in so many cases, because I find myself, you know, even in being an entrepreneur about like three years in ish, you know, I find myself still repeating this pattern of, you know, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And really in these last couple of months, I've really focused more on who do I need to be? Mm -hmm. What can I do to reconnect myself over and over and over throughout the day um, and changing my routine and things like that. Um, and then it feels like more things fall apart. But really, like I'm seeing the correlation now. Like it's not an accident that I started focusing more on my connection to myself and then more things started to fall apart. Um, yes. So I, love, I love your perspective of, you know, getting excited about it because it's really, you're absolutely right. It's just, it's really just, we weren't, I will also just speak for myself. I, there were certain things in my life that I wasn't going to let go of by myself. Like, because I had convinced myself that it had provided me just like teaching on some level, like some sort of security, some sort of comfort, but it really feels like, you know, everything, every time something falls apart, it's actually an opportunity to just be more expansive and to have more opportunities that when we're hanging on to our little thing over here, we're not going to grip, you know, grab onto this big thing because that's scary too. So got to take this thing away so that you can really open your arms mm -hmm. and to receive this bigger gift that's on its way. Yeah, this is just like what we were talking about earlier. You got to make space in, in your life to invite new energy in. So I learned everything the hard way, <laughs> you know, in the first few years after I woke up, I learned that the hard way that if there is something that is in the way of receiving, that's blocking me from receiving what it is that I really want, and I'm desperately holding on to that, life is going to take it away. So what it does is that it first gently knocks on the door, it gives you a few warning signs, mm -hmm. and if you listen and you allow yourself to let go, fine, nothing happens. And if you're not answering the door, Sooner or later, that knocking gets louder and louder and louder to the point that eventually life is going to just take down your door and it's going to take away that thing regardless of what it is that you think you want at the time. So it, the, the warning gets stronger and stronger and stronger and eventually it completely takes over so that you have no choice but to let go of it. And sometimes it takes that thing away from you so that you are forced at the time to have that empty space in your life. And little do you know at the time that this is the space in which you need to create a foundation, a clear foundation for you to call in what it is that you truly, that you truly love. And I went through the experience. I remember the first three months after I quit my job, I sometimes um, use this analogy as some type of um, demolition project in which I was in this house and every single day a certain part of the house was coming down. So one day life would take away my windows. The next day the door would disappear. On some days the entire roof would come down and pretty soon I was standing out in the open where there was nothing left. And little did I know at the time where there was nothing was where I was able to build everything. So that's part of that's that's part of the uh, that's definitely part of the process in which we 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 do this energy exchange because at the end of the day everything in life is an energy exchange. Mm -hmm. We return something 
to the universe, something that's no longer serving us, so that the universe can then give us something that is aligned with where we want to go and who we want to be. And it's destructive, but it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just putting together a bunch of things in my head right now, like looking back on the past three years and, and thinking about the things that came together, but also the things that I really, really, really loved that were taken away from me. And I've, I've thought about it for a while. Like, you know, it's sometimes we identify with something so, so much that even years down the line, it's still floating around in our heads. And now I see more, I see more clearly that, um, you know, that the, the staying small story, the new staying small, small story that came onto the other staying small. And I thought I was growing and of course I was growing, but like the stories that still keep us smaller when we're really infinite, um, it appears as if at least in my life that that's definitely going to be, and has been taken away time and time again. Um, and you really do feel, you do feel like I'm just out here all by myself, you know, <laughs> like I have no house. Like I have no car. In my case, a couple weeks ago, my car broke down. Like I have no car, like really. Um, and I think it, Kyle C says, you know, he says that anything that you really, really identify with, or you really, really cling to will be taken away because yes. you need to see that your safety, because we, we cling to things because we feel safe or we have comfort or whatever. It's that familiarity he's, he's said before. And it's, I feel very much you're saying the exact same thing is you need to know that you're the source of your safety, that you're the source of your freedom, that you're the source of your abundance. Like it's not, the clients and it's not the car and it's not the house and it's not the friends and it's not the job. It's you. And I think, um, would you mind speaking to that a little bit? Absolutely. You agree? Uh, absolutely. You are the source. I am the source where we are the source. And the thing is, you know, we are, we are expressions of something that is so much bigger. That's just infinite, eternal, timeless. That's whole in itself. That's, you know, some people call this spirit, some people call it God, some people call it goddess, some people call it life force energy, source energy, divine, whatever it is that people call it, we are each an expression of that. So staying within the comfort zone simply means that we are, it's, you know, the comfort zone is a misalignment because the comfort zone means that we are unconsciously putting these fences around ourselves and saying, this is who I am choosing to be for this lifetime for as long as I'm alive and breathing. This is who I am and I am nothing else. Where in truth, we are nothing like that tiny little identity that we pick up and put inside of this little box. Mm -hmm. We're none of that. And life is change. Life is change. We are change because we are life. So just to say that, you know, I want to make sure that this is who I am and I want to lock myself within this tiny identity and I want to make sure that everything that I want works out exactly the way that I want it to be by holding on to that safe job or that safe marriage, whatever that is, at the end of the day, you are resisting change, which means you are resisting life. Mm -hmm. And the moment that we start to resist life, our life force energy gets stagnant because we are not the same. Even, you know, even like by, by the end of this year, the cells within our bodies have completely transformed. The, the old cells have died and the new cells have been birthed. So we are change and part of who we are and this human experience that we're having is embracing that change. It's embracing the nature of consciousness, which is always evolving, always expanding. So I know that, and I even know people personally in my life that are resisting that type of change. In the moment that we resist, this is when we start to experience stagnancy, blockages, unsatisfying circumstances. Mm -hmm. It's really because we are living in misalignment and we are not allowing ourselves to embrace our true nature, which is this, this creative substance that is always growing, that is always expanding. So the term playing small to me just means that we are living in misalignment Mm -hmm. um, as to what we're completely, as well, as to what we are capable of, as to who we really are. And that's, um, you know, the source is 
I mean, we are, at the end of the day, we are the ones that are generating these experiences from right. within. So I love, I love Kyle C's, by the way. I love it. I'm obsessed with him now. Like I actually, a lot of the, like the changes that I've made in terms of adding like longer med, like I've been meditating for a long time, but I've never made it meditated more than like half an hour regularly. So in the last couple of months, I've added an hour of meditation, if not more. Um, each day and med and yoga and all of these things and he just it, what it really made what he, what he said that really made sense to me that really got me is you know it's it's better to invest in yourself and the connection with yourself even when it feels like everything else has been falling apart which is exactly how I feel like in my life on many levels is that things that I thought in my business and my personal life that were like solid. I definitely had that like, yep, I'm going to pe teach heart centered <laughs> marketing uh, with integrity for the rest of my life. And, <laughs> and like now it just seems funny because it seems like one strand of many of the things that I, I can offer, but it's not the, it's not the, it's just a tool. It's yeah. not who I am. And I think I started to have some problems when I started to identify as it, like this was my thing. And then I was realizing I wasn't loving it. I was liking it, but I wasn't loving it. And I really see that the universe just kind of came in and was like, if you don't love it, then it's not going to flow. Mm. So things stop flowing. And I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. This resonates so deeply because you know, when I, when I first quit my job, I was a healer for many years. I was a Reiki master teacher. Um, you know, I taught Reiki, I did Reiki, and I still love Reiki because it's just a really great tool. But I started evolving past that, and I no longer identify with a healer role because when psychedelics came into my life, I discovered that, that they are Mother Nature's red pill. They have the ability to instantly wake people up to to their higher selves. So I started going into that direction. And at the time, I remember going through this internal struggle, you know, oh, I already had an established business. I was really comfortable where I was. And unlike my job, I was truly happy doing energy medicine, you know, doing these healing sessions, one-on-one -on -one or group healing sessions and combining at the time spiritual life coaching with that. Mm -hmm. So I went through my own little internal struggle with, mm, you know, should I really let this go? Because it's comfortable. It's already, you know, it's, it's great. It's, it's working. working. Yeah, it, it's working. It's working. <laughs> why should I, why should I fix something that's not broken? Totally. But at the end of the day, I felt a higher calling. And, you know, if there was anything that I learned over the years, it's always to honor that higher calling, to honor that internal evolutionary urge for me to be more, to experience more, to create more. And um, so after going back and forth for about a whole year, kind of like doing the psychedelic coaching um, underground, you know, not really telling people more about it. I decided to finally come out and just say, you know what, this is my highest passion right now, and this is how I can help people. Um, and I still get to use all of my energy tools, and I still get to use everything that I did before, but right now, this is what's the most fulfilling. And I feel that for conscious entrepreneurs, this is also super important because you know, I, I've coached so many people that they go like, oh, I just quit my job because I wanna do this or I wanna be this. and if you don't do the work, it's actually very easy to then lock yourself up in another identity that's bigger and better and more upgraded than the last identity that you that you shed. But at the end of the day, an identity is still something that is not who you truly are. So at the end of the day, it's about always embracing that urge to expand more and to go just to follow where your heart is leading you, follow where where you want to go the most. And sometimes that might not make any sense. Like I my, totally feel like you're talking to me yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like my work, if you yes. two years ago, like, hey, you know, you would be doing ceremonies, you would be like, you know, in the future facilitating these retreats, you would be doing like these VIP intensives, um, you know, involving magic mushroom. I would be like, what are you what are you on right now? Why would right. I something like that? But you know what? It doesn't have to make sense because your new zone of creativity has, it comes outside of your zone of knowing right now. 
So whatever it is that you know, you've already created it. So whatever it is that you want to create has to come from the unknown. And the unknown is where the mysteries are. <laughs> You're the best. I'm like, all right, so I'll be going to Denver next week. And I don't know what my next steps are. Aside from, I found that like doing this podcast, it was something that like kept coming around. Like yeah. it was something that kept coming around. Like the idea of people being brave and the, pe the idea of people sharing their stories and the idea that our stories are so in service to humanity to Absolutely. others who are feeling lost and alone like that those themes in my life of not wanting people to feel alone in my willingness to share my own story in order to you know allow someone else to be like oh my gosh you understand what i'm going through like that's been thematic and it's funny because it almost takes doing things that are not quite fits to, and uncomfortable sometimes. To understand like what a not quite fit feels like. So, you know, originally we both know, knew, now know like what the wrong fit feels like. But as you move forward, it's almost as if you need to also discover what the 50% fit is or the 80% fit <laughs> that you can then, when you come upon, upon the thing, at least for the time, right? Because it's always going to change and evolve for mm -hmm. a time that feels 100%, then you can like really, really feel it and own it. What do you think? I feel absolutely. There's so much truth in that. Um, you know, there's, there's just no one way to to embrace your heart's calling. There's no one way to activate your highest potential. And since we are always evolving and upgrading ourselves, there's always going to be something higher that we're reaching for and we're embracing and we're embodying. So at the end of the day, it's not about, you know, oh, what should I be doing? You know, what should I be doing with my life right now? Like you said earlier, it's about who am I being right now? And what can I create out of that beingness? The how comes so much later, and I know for a lot of people, especially those who are struggling with, you know, leaving a certain circumstance behind and making that leap of faith, mm -hmm. the first question is always, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make it work? How am I going to make a living? How am I going to make money? But the how, according to the laws of creation, really comes so much later because the first step is always to decide. Decide what it is that you want. Decide who you want to be. Decide what type of energy you're embodying and radiating. And the moment that you decide, you're then going to know what it is that you are creating from that decision. And then the how comes later. The how comes as a step, as an aligned step. So as you mentioned, you know, that step might just be the you know, feeling the urge to create a podcast. Um, you know, for me, the step is, you know, moving to Costa Rica and doing medicine retreats. And it doesn't have to make sense. But the way that the universe works is that the moment you just take that one step, the next step is going to be revealed to you. And if you trust enough to take the next step, you are then going to see the next step. It's almost like walking in the dark with a flashlight where the ground in front of you is lit and that's it. And it's you trusting yourself, trusting life enough to always take that next step. So at the end of the day, you have this higher vision. You know that you want to be more, but you don't have to have all of that figured out because that can actually keep us trapped in this little ego programming that's called, I need to have the next 100 steps figured out and then some for me to feel safe. And right. again, that goes back to the safe programming. Right. So it's just about trusting enough to take the next step. And that's, that's, um, you know, and it's, it's a really, it's a glorious process. It really is. And it's exciting because you never know where you're going to end up. But if you trust, you know that you're going to end up somewhere that is leading to your next adventure. And that's what life is. I am learning so much from what you're saying because, you know, you're saying life is a, it's a glorious adventure. And in my head, I'm thinking, and it's terrifying, you know, <laughs> I think that it's, it's such a great way to, to reframe it because, you know, like that plan programming, that needing to know the hundred steps, like, oh God, I know that so, so well. And I also know that when we pop on this podcast and have a plan of talking about your being brave story and having a conversation, we don't actually know what we're going to talk about. And I always believe that the best 
conversations happen this way and that it'll be of service to you, it'll be of service to me, and it will be of service to everybody that's listening. Um, yeah. So it's, it's just further confirmation that the things that I know, like kind of on a small, what I see as a smaller level, really the universe is asking us all to, to, you know, when we know the next step, take it, knowing the next step behind it is coming because we have faith that this, for, that, and, and take action for this current step. Definitely, definitely. The universe is asking us to go to our next level, all of us because it doesn't serve anyone to play small anymore. It doesn't serve anyone to swim in a soup of unconscious programming that's called, I'm not enough, there's not enough, and I don't have the power to do this. We are being invited to step into the next grandest version of who we are. And take the next step is crucial. Taking, it, it's, it's crucial in this journey. Absolutely. So we're actually coming to the close of our time, and I just wanna say, Thank you so much, Juliet, for your my my podcast number two. Like it's so important in this new adventure that I'm going on. I have the most amazing people like you coming on and sharing this space with me and sharing your story with everyone that's listening. Thank you so much. Oh, I also, I also want to say, like, for anybody that's listening that is really resonating with what Juliet is saying and her story and where she's been and what she's doing, and you're interested and you have that kind of pull to know more, that's your intuition telling you that, you know, Juliet could be a guide for you, a guide for you to help learn how to guide yourself. So if, if you're feeling that, I want to give you the opportunity to know how to find out more. So Juliet, how can people find out more about you if they're just like, oh my gosh, like I have to know more. I mean, I feel like we could probably have show after show after show together and like never run out of things to talk about. Seriously. So to talk about. <laughs> I um, know. Isn't that, oh. it's wonderful. And it's then, so, yeah. yeah, tell us how they can um, contact you or reach out to you if they're feeling really drawn to, you know, your work and your, yourself. So first of all, thank you so much, Amy, for having me on the show. It's been a blast and I'm having so much fun. And this has just recharged my energy because it's afternoon in New York and I just started feeling a little sleepy and it's snowing outside. <laughs> but it's snowing here too. <laughs> oh my goodness. So this has completely recharged my energy and I'm just feeling super vibrant and excited. Um, so Anyone who wants to reach me, my website is juliatang.com. I'm super easy to find. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. You can even Google my name and find me. And, um, you know, just uh, drop, me, drop me a message, contact me, find me on social media, whichever you use. And I would love to hear from you and see if I can be of support of your journey or anything that you're going through. I know that I do have the 21 part spiritual awakening guide on my side that I just reconstructed. So I'm going to make that available as well for people. It's a free resource for people who are going through this process and looking for guidance, just so that you understand the signposts, the emotions, and whatever, you know, things come up during each stage of the journey. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. And I'll be sure to put all of your contact information below the podcast. So it'll be extra, extra easy for people to um, reach out to you. And I just want to say to everybody out there, I want to ask a question, question of you from our conversation, from your experience, what is possible in your life if you take your next step towards being brave and stepping into the life of your dreams. Just going to put it out there, something I want you to think about. And until next time, I see you, I believe in you, and I love you. And talk to you next time, guys. Bye.